and welcome to this week's and in this BNF bite size style video I'm going to be covering mist pills. Now I hope that you do enjoy this video and if you do please do give it a thumbs up, share, like, subscribe and also do visit my Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Now with mist pills I feel like this can be sometimes at first glance a really complicated topic and whilst yes BNF is always my first go-to Actually, I like the way that the Faculty of Sexual and Reproductive Healthcare, um, their guidance that they provide, I, I actually like going to them for um, when I'm trying to look up things about contraceptives, missed pills, emergency contraceptives, etc. I like the way that it's laid out and the way that they describe different things. Um, and that's definitely a resource that I've used to help build this video. Um, and it's also a, a resource which I mentioned in previous videos as well that I do really recommend. So the Faculty of Sexual and Reproductive Healthcare or FSRH. So when we think about missed pills, can be a little bit of a, of a complicated one. Um, but first and foremost, what actually is a missed pill? Especially if we're thinking about the combined oral, oral contraceptive, what is a missed pill? So the simple definition, which comes from the FSRH, is that a missed pill is one where a combined oral contraceptive, we're talking about combined oral contraceptives in particular, is a, is a missed if it is not taken in the 24 hours after it should have been taken. So that 24 hours is the real key part. So based on FSRH um, guidelines, a combined oral contraceptive pill is missed if it is not taken in the 24 hours after it should have been taken. Now, when we're thinking about combined oral contraceptives, just a bit of background knowledge, they come as 21 days worth of active pills. And then after those 21 days, a woman should have a seven day uh, hormone free interval. So 21 days takes pill, seven days has a hormone free interval. Now you can get something called everyday pills and this is actually to help um, some women with their compliance because after having 21 days of active pills and then having seven days of a hormone free interval, they may then forget to start taking active pills again. So in the everyday pills, there's actually 28 days worth of pills within there but actually only 21 of them are active pills and seven of them are sometimes known as dummy pills or as inactive pills and like I said that's just to help with compliance. So when missing pills or extending that hormone free interval so those seven days that we mentioned where um, pills should be omitted by missing pills either at the start of a packet or at the end of a packet could in theory increase the risk of um, ovulation if unprotected sexual, in sexual intercourse has occurred during that time. And that's sometimes then referred to as the critical time. So the end of a packet or the beginning of a packet, that can be referred to as the critical time. And critical time for loss of contraceptive protection is when a pill is emitted at the beginning or at the end of a cycle. So when we're looking at combined oral contraceptives, if a woman misses one pill, she should take it as soon as she remembers, even if that means taking two pills at, um, together at the same time. She should resume normal pill taking and no further precautions are required. We're all good. However, if a woman misses two or more pills, especially in the first seven in a packet, then protection may be lost. She should take an active pill, resume normal pill taking, abstain from sex or use additional methods for contraception, for example, condoms for the next seven days. So say for example, um, so we have, as we mentioned, those 21 days. Say for example, a woman misses her pill on day 18 and she misses her pill on day 19. We're now on day 20. So as we've just mentioned before, we're coming to that end of the packet where that critical time we're now in. So say if a woman has had unprotected sexual intercourse within that period, say between day 17 and day 20, for example, then actually those seven days where she's not meant to have a pill, or if it's the everyday pills, then those seven days where an inactive or dummy pill is being taken, that should be omitted and a new packet should then be started. And as we said beforehand, those additional precautions as well. So either abstaining from sex 
or using additional barrier methods um, or using additional methods such as barrier methods, for example, condoms. So in general, if vomiting occurs within three hours of taking a combined oral contraceptive, or if a patient experiences severe persistent diarrhea that lasts um, over 24 hours, then the rules of a missed pill should be applied in these situations as well. So when is emergency contraceptives um, recommended? So emergency hormonal contraception, that is recommended when two or more combined oral contraceptives have been missed within the first seven tablets in a packet and unprotected sexual intercourse has occurred since finishing the last packet. That's when emergency contraceptive would be recommended. Now, focusing on progesterone-only pills or POPs, we have, for example, Northisterone, if that's being used, um, used for contraception, or we have Desogestrel. Now, in the BNF, it says that if a woman forgets to take a pill, then she should take it as soon as she remembers and carry on with her normal pill-taking regime at the right time. If a pill is more than three hours late, then protection may be compromised. In the case of desogestrel, though, it's not three hours, it's 12 hours. So if a pill is more than 12 hours late, then protection may be compromised. With other POPs, though, in general, it's three hours. So in this instance, continue with normal pill taking and do use additional methods for the next two days. FSRH recommends emergency hormonal contraceptive if more than one pop is missed or if it's been taken three hours late or 12 hours late in the case of desogestrel and unprotected sexual intercourse has occurred to, um, before two further tablets have been taken correctly. Now, in the case of vomiting or severe diarrhea, especially if vomiting occurs within two hours of taking a pop, then another should be taken. Remember, with the combined oral contraceptive, it was three hours, but with a pop, it's two. If a replacement pill is not taken within three hours of, normal of the normal time for taking a pop, or 12 hours in the case of desogestrel, or if there is vomiting or persistent um, severe diarrhea, then additional precautions during the illness are required and for two days after recovery as well. So I hope that this summarised the meaning of missed pills a bit more and made it a bit clearer if it's the case of combined oral contraceptives or it's the case of POPs, at what instances does action need to be taken and in what instances would emergency hormonal contraceptive be recommended. So I hope that you liked this video and if you did, please do hit that subscribe button. Please do share and give your support. I do really appreciate the love. Also make sure to check out my playlists. I have playlists on high weighted topics, medium weighted topics, low weighted topics, general advice, calculations, all sorts of playlists. So make sure to go and check those out too. Until next time, good luck with your revision and happy revisings.